What's up YouTube? Welcome to today's video. Today is an editing session. Uh, you're going to go through with me as we edit this image from start to finish. And I'm going to go through it in Capture One, show you how I color grade in quotes or how I achieve really, really dark, rich skin tones. And we'll just finish up in Photoshop. It's a very nice image. I'm sorry you've seen the thumbnail. So uh, let's get straight into Capture One. Okay, so we have this image right here. I shot it, I think, about a year ago, and it was shot exactly like this. So as you can see, if you push reset, reset is grayed out. And what that means is that no adjustments have been made whatsoever to this image. So the first thing I'll do, which is what is bugging me right now, is that the image look, looks like it's kind of um, slanted. So in Capture One, I'm just going to press R for my rotate tool and draw a line on, on where I feel like should be a straight line. And then the moment you let go, it straightens it out for you. So we've done that. Um, so the next thing we'll do is start to deal with the colors in the image. All right, so uh, I'm going to go to my, um, I'm going to go to my style tab. So this tab is called your style tab. And under it, I'm going to go to this tool called base characteristics. Now, if you can't find base characteristics in your capture one, all you need to do is right click on a gray area here go to add tool and then look for it so it's right here now base characteristics carries kind of like the presets or the um i think presets is the word or the the style that your camera shoots with so for example you can see here that i shot this with the nikon z9 and you see there's a flat landscape monochrome all the different camera profiles right the camera profiles is what i was looking for now the good thing about base characteristics is that it also gives you access to kind of like other cameras so what i'll do is if you can't see other cameras in yours make sure you click this and click show all and then it should give you access to other cameras so there's one i really like to use which is the leica m monochrome neutral and this is it right here so just clicking that now this is not a preset it's kind of like a it's built into the way the, the file is exactly so if i push y you can see before and after so it does a bit of desaturating mostly that's what it does but I like to start here now for the look i'm going for this image is kind of too warm so i'm going to cool it down a little bit so i'm just going to grab my white balance and cool a little bit till i'm happy all right i think i'm happy with that so let me zoom in and you can see so pressing y shows us where we started and where we are so before and after all right now the next thing we want to do is to select her skin so we want to select her skin and do some work there so I'm just going to click on add here. When we click on add, it creates a new layer here. Double click this and let's just name it skin. All right. So now how do we select our skin? We can use something called the magic brush. Uh, we'll come to your brush tool here and click on magic brush and then click in M for mask. So what M does is that it allows you to see what you're brushing. So let's just do that again. So you just need to brush a certain area and wait and then you see that capture one tries to figure out what you are trying to brush and it kind of just automatically brushes it for you so in this case it's brushing on the backdrop you can just press command z there and you can right click and reduce the tolerance if you don't want it to be too um jumpy right so it will be a little bit more accurate but you would have to go over it a couple of times to cover the entire skin so i'm just going to um, brush like this so i'm done with her entire skin now the good thing about this is that it does a brilliant job when it comes to the edges um, so if you zoom in and you see you see that it does a really good job with the edges so that's really why i love using the magic brush in capture one um, so i'm just going to select her skin like this like this and don't worry if you're selecting some other areas um i'm fine with that for now it doesn't really bother me you can also always take your eraser brush and just erase mask and then just go over all these areas where it's straight the most important thing is that your edges are as clean as possible all right so once we have that what we want to do is i'm going to pop our skin a bit by pushing my levels this way just to get some get the highlights popping a little bit and we can also bring the darks a bit um, but no let's leave that for now and the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to add some clarity like that. 
frame and then I'll go to the skin tone tab. So now there's a tool called color editor and under color editor, color editor there's something called skin tone. So you go to skin tone, you click your picker tool and you select, you know, just select kind of like a mid tone and then we'll just bring down the lightness a bit and bring down the saturation a bit too. All right, so just bring down the lightness a bit. So we're going from here to here, and then we'll go back to our background. So in our background, I'll add some saturation, just a little bit. And we've done this to this. All right, I'm not still happy with the skin yet. I still want to do some more edits on it. But before that, I would just bring down the mid-tones of the entire image a little bit. So just bringing down the midtones. Now there's a tool called color balance here and you have shadow midtones and highlights and then you can adjust the luminance of each of them here. So pressing Y you can see before and after and then zooming in starting to look like it. So I'll create a brand new layer again by clicking add and let's just name this skin 2. Okay all right, I will then take the first layer, which is the skin, and or skin to rather, right click and say copy mask from skin. So that means I don't have to rebrush it on my skin layer again. Now this time, instead of using the skin tone tool, I'm going to use the advanced tool. Now the advanced tool is a lot stronger and it does a lot more when you move the slider a little bit. So I'm just going to click on the mid tools in our skin again. And this time I'm going to bring down the lightness a bit more. So, and bring down saturation a bit as well. All right, so just be careful when you're doing it with advanced because it does a lot. So if you see before and after, you can see that it has done a lot. So it's really, really darkened her skin and pushed her skin to now. This might be a little bit too much, but uh, let's leave it for now. So I'm going to push M and I don't want this effect to affect her hair. So I'm just going to erase it off her hair right there right because her hair has a nice brown color and we started to lose that color so let's just get it off like that beautiful so um this is before and this is after i could just reduce the opacity of that layer a bit if i feel like it's too much but uh, i kind of like it where it's at all right the next thing we are going to do is just you know uh i want to talk uh, play around with the grains in the image so i'll create a new layer um, just create a new layer and let's name it stress okay it's always good to name your layer so that you know exactly what you did where and this time around i'm going to try to select her, her green dress just like that perfect so once we have that i am going to go to advanced again and this time select her dress and so if you see in the original image before we did all this the green is a little different from the way it looks now so once you get it to look more like that so i'll change my hue a little bit to the left increase saturation a bit so that the green is slightly at least it's similar to what we were working with before. So this is before and after of the entire thing. So I think we're done with the first batch of um, processing right here in Capture One. So my workflow is usually Capture One, Photoshop, and then back to Capture One. So I'll take this to Photoshop just to do a few cleanup and then we'll bring it right back to Capture One to do the final um, edit. So just right click and say edit with Adobe Photoshop. Um, this is not a frequency tutorial, frequency separation tutorial by any means. That's why you should edit the skin. So um, I am sure everybody watching this knows how to do frequency separation. If you don't, I have a video about it. So I wouldn't take my time to explain. I'll just rush through it. But before I go into frequency separation, um, I just want you to note that there is this 
shift of color from here to here, right? The shade is just slightly different of this side of the background to this side. And what's happening is because there's a flare from the light that is hitting this area and just slightly changing the color a little bit. So what we're going to do is just to balance that out, I'll create a new layer and change the blending mode of layer to color. So I'm going to pick a regular brush, just a regular brush. Um, do the opacity at like 45 and flow at flow at 20, opacity at 40. Um, so I'm going to select, so you see this is different from this. So I'm going to select this and then just paint over these areas here. So something I should have done is just select subjects on the lower layer and let's just add to that selection, select the plants as well or the flowers rather. Okay, just the rough selection is fine. Uh, so once we've done that, you can click Shift Command I to invert that selection. The reason I'm doing this is so that when I brush, uh, when I brush with my normal brush here, it doesn't go into my subject. Okay. Command D to deselect everything and just carefully go so this is what we've done. This is before and after. I don't know if you can see that, but I solved that problem. All right, so we would flatten this and then we'll do a frequency separation layer. I'm going to use a radius of three for this particular image. Um, the action I'm using is from FX Ray. Um, I can put a link in the description below to have you download that. Like I said, this is not a frequency separation video. Um, you know, recently I have been trying out AI to edit my pictures. So I got this panel called Retouch for me. Um, it does a decent job. It does a decent job. You have to wait like um, four minutes. There are about three minutes sometimes. But it does a decent job. So I'm not going to go to detail with this one here. I'm just going to soften the texture around her neck area here. Now, um, if you notice, you see that there is uh, uneven skin tone. So you see the color of our skin tone here and the color of our skin tone here. That's something that we're going to fix when we go back into Capture One, okay? So we'll fix that when we go back into Capture One. But for now, okay. So we have that. I'm just going to quickly go to the low layer and do a quick brushing of our skin. Again, if you want to learn how to do frequency separation properly, I have a video. I'm going to link it in the description below. Everything I'm doing here is explained fully in that video. So I know that there are a lot of ways that people use frequency separation, but I try to explain it the best way I know how and how I personally use it. Uh, frequency separation could be a very powerful tool and it will also be a tool that doesn't really make your images turn out well. It depends on how how you use it. So um, even if you know how to use frequency separation, just watch the video, you might learn something. So again, I am um, this is just a rough edit. It could be a lot better, but I'm just gonna rush through it quickly um, this check layer I use it to be able to see exactly how um, light is falling on the skin and how to brush it to make it look as good and as realistic as possible so I think this is the fastest edit anybody has ever done <laughs> No bad. Can you rate my my edits from on a scale of one to ten in the comment section below? Let me know how well I did and what how many minutes. Okay. So we are done with that and we are going to take it right back to capture one. Okay guys, so we are right back here in capture one and we have the image that has been edited already so this time around i'm going to create a new layer and i'm just going to name it skin again so we're really working on the skin a lot here 
and I am going to try to mask her skin again, just like we did the first time. So this is where we try to even out texture on her, uh, sorry, not texture, where we try to even out um, the skin tone, right? So we want to even out skin tones that are not even. Um, remember, if your magic brush isn't be cooperating, you could always just go back to like a regular brush and just fill in the areas you feel like you need it to. Alright, so quickly what we're going to do is we're going to go back to that skin tone um, tool on that color editor. And this time around, just pick the skin tone that you feel like represents what you want to work with. So let's say I pick this here. Right, so it picks that skin tone now. Under uniformity, you have hue, saturation, and lightness. And what these sliders will do is that the moment you move your hue, it will try to balance out the hue of every other skin tone to the one that you picked, right? So if I move my hue to the right, it will try and match the hue everywhere to be like the exact hue I picked. And you can do the same for saturation as well. So once you do that, if I show you before and after, so you see that the skin tones are a lot more even here than they were here. So that's how you can even out skin tone in Capture One. You could also even out the lightness by pushing your lightness slider like this. But um, I try to stay away from this. Not Don't do that so much. All right, so we've gone from here to here. And then again, I could still darken her skin a little bit if I wanted to. So let's just do that. Okay, and then for the overall image, I'm just gonna push lightness a bit. Good. I'll create a new layer and press T. T is for something called the radial mask. And I'm just gonna create the mask. So what I'm trying to do is to create a vignette. Um, there's an actual vignette to, vignetting tool, but it doesn't always um, pick the center as a reference point. I mean, the subject's face at the reference point, so. Um, just like that, we've gone from the start to here. Okay, so we've gone from, where's the original image? So this is the original image, but let's reset that. So we've gone from here to here. Yep. I hope this video was helpful. As you can see, we didn't even use any styles or presets. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think. Let me know the kind of videos you want me to bring. Please, if you're watching these videos and you're not subscribed, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. We have a lot more content coming from you. Thank you guys so much for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.